Hello, beautiful family. Just wanted to do a, a walk and talk as we as we eagerly await. Do you know that there's a crown laid up in heaven for those who are eagerly awaiting his coming? That's what Paul said in his epistle. But only for those who are eagerly awaiting his coming. Of course, it's not a salvation issue, but those who are eagerly awaiting his, his coming or looking, watching, there's a crown laid up for us. A crown of righteousness is what Paul says. And I think that's so beautiful. And, um, you know, I was thinking about Psalm 91. I love Psalm 91. I used to always pray it at night with my children before I put them to bed. And Psalm 91 says, Yea, even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil. For you are with us. Your rod and your staff, they protect and they comfort us. You prepare a table before us in the presence of our enemies. You anoint our head with oil and our cup overfloweth. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of our great God and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, forever and ever. Amen. But now listen to this. Yea, even though we walk, right, we're walking through the valley of the shadow of death. It's the shadow. It's just the shadow, guys. We walk through the valley of the shadow of death. So that's why God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and of love and of sound mind. And we always need to remember that. But I just thought, you know, you know how it is. You start reading your Bible, you keep reading your Bible, and it's active and alive. Truly, it's active and alive, and these things pop out at you. And I just realized that we're walking through the valley. We're walking through the valley. So ultimately, we're going to. What's our destination? Well, our, as it is written, our citizenship is in the kingdom of heaven, in the Shamaim in Hebrew. Not here on earth. No, not at all. And so we walk through this valley of the shadow of death just a shadow satan wants to scare us but he's a defeated foe it's already written <laughs> and so remember in psalm 91 it also says that or i think it's ephesians that we are children of the most high el elian Children of the Almighty, El Shaddai, predestined to be in the Lamb's Book of Life, even before the foundations of the earth were even formed. Can you imagine that? But it's true. God knows the beginning from the end and the end from the beginning. And so, it says, We who seek shelter in the secret place of the Most High will abide under the shadow of El Shaddai. The shadow of El Shaddai. He's there. He's with us. He's covering us. He's protecting us. As opposed to the valley. As opposed to the, to the shadow of darkness. No, we have seen a great light. And the light has pierced through the darkness. And the darkness cannot comprehend the light. Nor can it... Nor can it... Um, it can't comprehend the light, nor can it do anything about it. The light is the light. And we are the light of the world. And that's so beautiful. I, I strongly recommend you guys keep... Oh, and I wanted to say another thing. This is very important. If you watch mainstream media, you are going to be... You're going to introduce to the false narrative, right? That's why I really don't recommend mainstream media at all. And God is shaking, God is shaking the olive tree. God is shaking, not only the olive tree, he's shaking the heavens and the earth. He's warning us, he has been warning us for the last 2,000 years. And he said, things will increase 
these pestilences, these pestilences, earthquakes in, the, in, in various places, wars and rumors of wars, all these things are warning us because God never does anything until he warns his people as it is written. And so I believe there's a big, <laughs> listen guys, honestly, right? Not honestly, because I, I strive to always be honest. Let me rephrase that. You know, it says that, you know that it says that, um, hold on a minute. I need to buy one of those phone holders. You know, it says that, it says, hold on. I don't know how Steve does this. How do you feel about Jewish people? That's my question to you. We've all been brought up with that notion, maybe not all of us, but I think a lot of people have been exposed to the notion that Jewish people are, they're wealthy because they're greedy or this or that, da 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 you know, the Jewish jokes and this and that. Just like there's, you know, there's a, a stigma with Mexicans, a stigma with, with, uh, with everybody, you know? Nobody's happy with anybody, right? And we're all human beings, right? But the important thing is the spirit that lives inside of us. So what I'm trying to tell you is ever since October 7th, I think that was very prophetic because God knows your heart. He knows every single idle thought that you're thinking. Not only, not only does he know every single idle thought that you're thinking, but he knows what you're going to do next. He already knows. And so what I'm trying to tell you, hold on, let me, let me put this here so I can talk, hold on, perfect, hallelujah, God is good. Okay, in continuation, what I'm trying to tell you is that ever since October 7th, God is trying to see, this is very important because everything goes back to the Jewish nation, right? God, Israel is God's prophetic timeline, right? I'm sure you've heard that before. If you look at a clock, right? A regular um, analog clock, not digital. The hour hand is Israel. The minute hand is Jerusalem. And the second hand is the Temple Mount. And so, during the Christ's 1,000 year millennial reign, the capital where he's gonna be ruling and reigning from is gonna be Jerusalem. And the remnant, the, the one-third of the Jewish people that are going to be saved out of the Great Tribulation are going to be, they're going to be at the top, guys, <laughs> because because the oracles of God were given to them first. You understand that? And God, God is a covenant-keeping God. And that's why it's ever since October 7th, replacement theology has gotten out of control. We're, you know... The church has not the church has not replaced the covenant that God has for the Jews. If that were true, that means that if God forgot about the Jews, that means he's going to forget about us because we have a covenant with him as well. He's a covenant-keeping God. Remember that. And so what I'm trying to get at, my point is that I'm sorry because I don't do walk and talk so much, so it's hard for me to concentrate while walking and talking. But what I'm trying to tell you is that love your Jewish brethren. Yes, yes, Paul says they're enemies um, because they don't have the gospel, something like that, right? But but we were all like that, right? Before we came to Christ, and, and when. Christ died. He was on that cross for six hours from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., right? As soon as he gave up his spirit, that, to that, that veil, that long, long veil, that curtain that separated the, the, the outside to the innermost holy of holies, right? Where only the, only the high priest could go once a year into. 
he separated, he tore that veil, which is almost like a circumcision, a spiritual circumcision. So, and he, and it clearly says that he that he took away the hostility that's between Jews and Gentiles because there is a hostility, guys. Yes, yes, we've been brought up to think, and I know. <laughs> Satan puts thoughts in my head once in a while as well, you know? Even though my grandfather was Jewish and and I love the Jewish people because they still have, well, you know, a reverence. They still revere God. They have a holy fear of God, right? And that's another thing. The fear of God is the beginning of all wisdom and understanding. It's, it's not a fear. It's, it's, it's a reverence, a respect. That's what it means. That's why it's important to, to understand your Bible. But... What he has done since October 7th, I'm sorry that I'm dragging this on, but I'm just trying to think of the right words to say. Since October 7th, you've seen the rise of anti-Semitism, right? And in 1 John, it says the spirit of the Antichrist is alive, right? And he's here. And we, and we see the spirit of Antichrist, which is the enemy, everywhere, right? But in the book of Isaiah, it also says that when the enemy comes in like a flood, God will raise up the spirit of the Lord against the enemy. So that's a beautiful thing. That means he knows. We know. So what I'm trying to get at, <laughs> sorry. Many people, ever since October 7th, have taken sides. Many people, if you watch mainstream media, you're going to see the false narrative. You're going to see psychological warfare okay of what hamas what satan i'm just gonna call it satan because that's that's the battle is between the kingdom of god almighty god the god of jacob through jesus christ and his shed blood and the kingdom of satan and let me tell you his the hierarchy is is perfect okay it's like a it's a it's like a command structure you have the general on top underneath you have the captains the lieutenants sergeants and, the, and then you have the foot soldiers you know it's a perfect hierarchy. But remember, only one third of the angels fell. <laughs> In heaven, there's a multitude, multitude that you can't even count of messengers. They're really called messengers. That is so amazing. So, ever since October 7th, okay? If you're watching mainstream media, you're being spiritually attacked. That this is one of the ways that Satan uses. It's called spiritual warfare, and he's trying to use the media into you thinking that Israel is committing genocide, right? That's why they have an arrest warrant for for um, for um, Benjamin Netanyahu, and even had an arrest warrant for Putin, right? It's all it's all it's all lies, guys. It's all lies. Only the Prince of Peace, when he comes, is going to deal with all this mess, and he is coming. Because he said the frequency, the intensity of all these things will keep ramping up. And that's what we see. They're ramping up. They don't stop. They're not letting go. It's just every day is something new. And so what I'm trying to tell you is God is not going to let any racist into the kingdom of heaven. He's not going to let any racist into the kingdom of heaven. Self-examine yourselves. I self-examine myself every day. I read Psalm 51 every day. It's important to remain humble. And remember, we're not greater than the Jews, nor are the Jews greater than us. We're all one under the body of Mashiach, the body of the Messiah, the Christ. And so what I see in October 7th, after October 7th, well, you see it on all the college campuses, is this spirit of Antichrist that is sweeping the world, just like he said he, what happened before the end of the world, there will be a tremendous, tremendous, um, all the nations will be gathered against Israel. But anyone who tries to attack Israel, they'll be cut into pieces. And so, guys, self-examine yourselves. I know, please don't watch mainstream media, even as tempting as it is. But that's, that's, that's the flesh that craves to watch the sensationalism and stuff. And you don't want that. You don't want that in your life. You don't want that in your life. You don't want that. I'm telling you right now, ever since October 7th, God, I, he, he does, he can do one thing and it causes 
a million other things to happen. He knows what he's doing. He's sovereign. He's in total control of everything. And so, ever since October 7th, a lot of people have turned to replacement theology. And they're, they're like, uh huh, it's true, you see? The Jewish people, they're, they're, you know, God did forget about them, you know? God did forget about the covenant because they were rebellious people. Huh. We're just as rebellious, guys. And so, replacement theology kicks in and says, yeah, the Jews, you know, they deserve this because of their disobedience and all of this and that. Guys, the Jewish people are just an example. They're held to a higher standard because all the oracles were given to them, to, our, to, the, to their forefathers, our forefathers. And so, if you have any hatred or resentment inside of you, inside of your heart, Okay, any hidden? Please, please, read Psalm 51. Ask God to, ask God to, ask God to, to give you, ask God to, to, to clean your heart. To, Psalm 51, I think it says, um, ask God to renew that steadfast spirit inside of you. And create in you a clean heart continually because there's a battle raging for our minds between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan and I don't want to see anyone be left behind because they have hatred towards Jews that's racism do you think God is gonna accept racists into the kingdom of heaven no of course not so anyways that's my message I love you and thank you for listening All sin is equally wrong and sinful, and accordingly carries the weight of guilt before God. Sin equally condemns the sinner because even the smallest of sins is an expression of rebellion against the Holy God. But if you fail to do this, you will be sinning against the Lord, and you may be sure that your sin will find you out. Have mercy on me, O God, because of your unfailing love, because of your great compassion, blot out the stain of my sins. Wash me clean from my guilt. Purify me for my sin, for I recognize my rebellion, and it haunts me day and night. Against you and you alone have I sinned. I have done what is evil in your sight. You will, you will be proved right in what you say, and your judgment against me is just.